So our team from Israel, the University of Lausanne, and actually we are doing something very complementary to uh, what you've just presented on, on nudging. And let me just um, take a few things that have been said today. So, uh, so Stefan actually uh, mentioned the idea of voluntary participation. I think this idea of voluntary participation is something that uh, I'm noticing is, uh, is actually pretty, pretty apparent in, in our project. Another thing that was uh, mentioned by Catherine this morning is think of the relevance of, the, uh, of your research process and uh, try to adapt it to real life situations. And it just striking me that actually what we are talking about in this project is really not the individual consumer as a, some sort of an objective unit of analysis, it's actually you and me, right? So we are talking about our own uh, everyday acts. And another very important uh, thing that, uh, that resonates with me is what Chris said, is that we all see the world in a different way. It's the same thing, it's actually something we'd like to do, do an individual level uh, uh, analysis of how people view, view nature and what their environmental identity is really like. So actually, uh, the individual is our unit of analysis. We take a psychological perspective on, on market behaviors. And in everyday life, people can have various multiple identities. Uh, they can have a social identity, they can have a professional identity, they can even have a gender identity, a national identity, or uh, even things such as a political identity, okay? And the literature in economic, uh, sorry, in, e uh, eco uh, in environmental psychology is telling us that uh, citizens can also have what we call an environmental identity. There are various views of how to define exactly environmental identity. In this project, we are uh, espousing maybe the, the dominant paradigm in the field, which is the following. It's a formal definition. The extent to which an individual includes nature within his or her cognitive representation of the self. It might sound ab abstract, but this definition has a huge advantage in terms of its applicability, is that if I'm a person who has a strong self-nature connection, it means uh, that I, I, I tend to include uh, nature in the way uh, I'm viewing myself, therefore I will be engaging uh, in acts that protect myself, and do not harm myself, therefore it's likely that I will also engage in acts that will be protecting rather than harming nature if I have a strong bonding between nature and my own self. These are the research questions that we will be investigating. The first is, what is the uh, personal meaning of nature and which factors influence the formation of individual environmental identity? Second, because people may have, may have multiple identities that can be more or less salient in different decision-making situations, how to make sure that it, it is the person's environmental identity and not his or her, for instance, professional identity that is uh, relevant and active in a specific decision-making situation. And thirdly, we'll try to see how to increase the portfolio, the spectrum of behaviors that a specific citizen associates with his or her environmental identity. We are doing uh, so with the collaboration of our main project partner, which is the city of Morge, situ situated on, on Lake Geneva. As you see, this is a picture of Lake Geneva with the old town of Morge, roughly uh, 15,000 uh, inhabitants. Let me walk you through our conceptual model uh, uh, very quickly through taking a, a concrete example. So let's imagine that uh, this person sitting there is, is actually David, 35, a single person living in the, in the old town of uh, Morge in one of these flats, doesn't really have a, a view on the lake, okay, and he's an engineer, okay? First part of the project, sp uh, spanning on the four first 14 months, is the investigation of David's environmental identity. Uh, most of the literature so far has been investigating the intensity of this relationship through surveys. What we plan to do is to add to this uh, uh, series of other dimensions, like the specific uh, images and uh, associations that David may associate with nature. We are also planning to look uh, into the uh, valence of those associations, to how positive, how negative they are, and also uh, something we um, do believe has a lot of potential is the power representation. To what extent this person would think that nature should be dominating humans or is dominating humans or the other way around. What we intend to do is to investigate also in the first part of the project the personal factors that can influence a person's environmental identity, things such as the past and present uh, living habitat, surroundings, as well as other variables. So that's the first part. Second part, uh, next 14 months, is let's go now into real decision-making situations. Let's imagine that David walks down to Manor, which is the, just a few steps away from this house 
in, in Morge, and he's hesitant between buying one kilogram of uh, organic apples or conventionally, conventionally grown apples. In this decision-making situation, how to make sure that the retailer or public authorities activate, make salient his environmental identity among the many identities that he may possess. And third aspect, now let's imagine that we manage to successfully activate his environmental identity, how to make sure that this environmental, uh, that the different behaviors, for instance, buying organic is really relevant personally in both time and space to his uh, environmental identity. We are doing, uh, we are planning the, the test of this uh, conceptual model uh, in collaboration with the city of Morges, using as a living lab, but it can be uh, adapted as well to other geographical areas of Switzerland. So the idea is to screen the, uh, the population uh, with representative samples for the first part of the, of the project, mainly using surveys and, and interview-based research, and in the second and the third part of the, uh, the project, mainly using lab and field experiments. So uh, uh, the hopeful, hopeful outcome it will be a, be a mapping task, identifying identity profiles, and then making recommendations for public authorities, as well as corporate uh, communications as educational programs. Thank you for your attention.